Hello and welcome to this PLC fault and error handling tutorial. As you can see in front of you, we have a Studio 5000 slash Iris Logics 5000 open. So we're going to be purposefully faulting out the controller and I'm going to be showing you how to recover from this fault, why this fault occurred in the first place. And we're going to discuss some of the ways to essentially avoid getting this fault. So without any further delay, let's get right into it. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. So I've already shown you the for loop instruction, which is an advanced feature, but it is quite a useful function where you're dealing with a lot of data that you need to process. And usually you cycle through a bunch of different arrays. So that's one of the easiest methods to fault out the controller. And I'm going to be showing you exactly how that happens. So I'm going to first of all, create a scenario for a for loop instruction by pulling in an XIC, and then changing this to a four by typing those letters in. And as you will notice, we have an uninitialized instruction, which we, we will configure shortly. So first of all, we need a routine which the for instruction is going to call. So I'm going to create that within the advanced section, I'm going to right click, hit on add and then go into new routine. So I'm going to give it the next digit which is available. So that's going to be 06 underscore for loop. That's going to be the name of our new routine. I'm going to press OK. And at this point, you'll notice that the for loop routine has been created at the bottom. So I can now go ahead and enter that same routine name in the routine name for the instruction. So underscore 06, and it's going to auto complete that for me. The index is going to be a double integer which we can use from the controller it has been created in the past and we'll reset it back to zero by just writing that value to it initial value this can be essentially a variable but we're just going to keep it constants to make it a little bit simpler so the initial value is going to be zero the terminal value is going to be 30 and the step size is going to be one so think of this as the most basic for loop instruction that you create can create and similarly to other languages it's just going to start with the index being zero then it's going to add one it's going to become one then two three four five six seven so on and so forth until it reaches 30 and then it's going to cycle back whenever the rung is called once again on the next scan time. So within the for loop instruction, we're going to create a very simple scenario where we're essentially moving from one array to the next. And this is very plausible. Like I said, when you're doing a lot of data processing, then you're going to definitely make this happen. So I'm just going to call this data. And this is going to be element zero. And this is going to move it to some array data number two. Sorry, it's going to be data two element zero. And instead of zeros, so this is going to be the starting point, but we want to use the index instead. And remember that within the for loop, you can use this index feature and it's going to essentially, what this program is going to do is, is that it's going to shift the register that's going to be in data into the register, which is going to be data two. So we do need, we definitely need to define them. So I'm going to right click and hit new data. Here, it's going to be a double integer uh, array. And let's make 50 of those elements within the array. It's also going to be a program scoped array. That's fine. And similarly data two. So we're going to make that as well. So it's going to be a an array of the same size 50. And at this point, we should be able to compile the program and see what happens. So I'm going to hit this compile button, hit yes. And you will notice that everything is fine. We don't have any problems. If we go back into our main routine, you'll notice that the index is always stuck at this 31. But it's essentially cycling so fast, but we don't that we don't get to see it cycle from zero to 31. It's essentially doing a full scan time. And then it goes from zero to 31, then it does a full scan of the PLC. Now, the example that I wanted to show you is going to be getting this loop out of bounds. So this happens when the arrays the array sizes are smaller than the index that you give them. So you're essentially trying to call an element which is outside of the array. And in this case, the terminal value can either uh, can exceed the 
the size of the array. So remember, the arrays that we've defined are going to be 50 in size. And in this case, we're going to let it go all the way up to 56. Once we compile the program, you'll notice immediately a couple of things. So first of all, the faulted state is going to be displayed. The controller is going to be in a fault, which is blinking right here. And then you're also going to notice that the two sides of the ladder are no longer green like they were in the uh, a few seconds ago and essentially that tells us that the controller has completely shut down the logic is no longer running and in this condition think of uh, in a plant scenario everything your processes are down nothing else is working your temperatures or your heaters are not responding none of your outputs are energized so this is a very critical state now why did this error happen in the first place well if we click on the faulted status there's going to be a little button there's going to be two different submenus that we can choose from. So we can either clear the faults and we can, or we can go to the faults. Now, if we clear the faults, you'll notice that we are back in remote program. So the PLC thinks it's okay. You'll see this green light displayed, but we're still not running the logic. We're still just in a programming state. We're not allowing the runs to execute. As soon as I run, you'll notice that immediately the PLC faults out again. So we do need to investigate and figure out why the fault is happening. So once you click on this, we can go into go to faults and a menu is going to essentially tell us what's going on with the processor. So notice that we are within the major faults tab, which means that it's an irrecoverable fault for which the PLC needs to shut down a minor fault on the other hand side might be something a little bit more minor as the name would suggest but essentially the plc doesn't always need to shut down you can program those faults to alert for a certain state but they're not going to bring the entire plc down that being said let's look at the major fault so right now it's a fault of first of all it tells you at what time it occurred but it also tells you that it is a program fault can be trapped by a fault routine, which is uh, just essentially understanding where the fault came from, but the array subscript is too large or control data type POS or length invalid. So we already know essentially what the fault is, but essentially the array subscript is definitely too large. So this is a descriptive name for the fault. And as you can see, it's also indicating us that that it's within the task tutorials and program advanced within the for loop. So what um a couple of conclusions that need to be made so first of all this tells us which routine we have encountered the fault in and if we go here we will notice that the indexes so it's a little bit difficult to troubleshoot for loops because you'll notice that the index here is essentially on un, it's unknown what the data is at that specific index because the index is essentially undefined for the entire scan that being said if we go back to the loop which is going to be in our main function main routine, then you'll notice that the index has only gone up to 50, although the terminal value has should have been 56. And this should be a very, a very good indicator to the fact that uh, our terminal value is essentially wrong. So if we change this back to let's say 49. Let's see, uh, I believe that 49 should work. Let's accept the changes. And then we're going to clear the faults and see if that's going to allow the PLC to run. And of course it does since we're going all the way up to index 50 and essentially the for loop i believe it's not called at 50 because our array is of size 50 but we're also we have the last element at at index 49 so this is perfectly fine as you can see the plc is back into its original state so why is this fault important well what usually happens is that within your for loops you always you're looking at the terminal value and for whatever reason you want to increase the uh the terminal size of the array but you're not necessarily it's not easy for you to reference back to the size of the array so what i mean by that is that if you have a problem with your tags then you can always cross reference the tag so for example if we um, if we go into this SQI SQ1 instruction, then you can, for example, tank level, you can always cross reference this tank level and see where it's being used. However, in the example of the for loop, it's not always obvious what these numbers are limited to. And therefore, it's very easy to make this mistake and bring the entire system down. And I've made this mistake myself. There's nothing wrong in, you know, inadvertently 
kicking out the PLC for this reason, but you do need to learn from such scenarios and you do need to make sure that what you're calling within your for loop is going is not going to be out of bounds. So very, very important example. And I've showed you essentially how to go back into a run state with the PLC. So everything is now okay. As you can see, the ladder is being executed. You have those iconic green sides and everything is a okay. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.